Hello, good evening. A couple from Lincolnshire accused of conspiring to abduct their own children say they're terrified that they'll never see them again. The couple, who can't be named, had their children taken into care a year ago, but they claim they did nothing wrong. Now they face their two youngest being put up for adoption. Of the 37 cases of adoption in Lincolnshire last year, only two were carried out with parental permission. Sarah Corker reports. A garage full of toys, but no children to play with them. It's almost a year since this couple's five children were taken into care. Their mother says they were told by social services it was to protect them from future risk of emotional harm. We've changed their voices to protect their children's identity. It's very hard. It's painful. It's very painful. I can't sleep. I'm not allowed to have any contact with my children. It's very hard, but I've got to keep fighting for my children. Your eldest son told the school that he'd been hit by you, his father. Did you hit him? No. No. I never hit my children. In April 2013, the children were taken into care. The couple told me a family court then ruled in December that the two youngest children should be put up for adoption and the three older children placed in foster care until age 21. Then earlier this month, both parents were arrested on suspicion of conspiring to abduct children. Lincolnshire County Council says any decisions to put a child into care or to place them up for adoption is made with the best interests of that child in mind. Ultimately, it's a decision for the courts to make and one which isn't taken lightly. Since the death of Baby P in 2007, there's been increasing pressure on social workers. But now one MP says the system is so unfair that parents who may have their children taken off them should leave the country to avoid social services. Because the courts rely on evidence that's opinion from the social workers employed by the local authority, and I know of at least one case where a social worker who recommended that a child be returned to its parents was actually fired because she'd been told not to send the baby home. Um, that's why it tends to be wrong. Campaigners have raised this Lincolnshire family's case in the European Parliament. Oh, 500,000 percent failed. I mean, they've betrayed them, they've mistreated them, they've given them grief. Cases like this are held in family courts behind closed doors. This family say they've struggled to understand the system. That's destroyed the life of my children. The marks will stay forever. Did never. you try to kidnap them? Never, never. We have no car and we've never tried doing that. They've been released on bail until May and the couple told me they don't know if and when they will see their three sons and two daughters again. Sarah Corker, BBC Look North. There's been an increase in complaints about loud gas-powered bird scarers disturbing the peace near farms in East Yorkshire and Lincolnshire. The devices protect crops from hungry birds, but some people near Alford in Lincolnshire want them banned, claiming they're a nuisance. Network Rail has announced it's investing £89 million in North Lincolnshire over the next five years. The money will go towards modernising signalling systems and upgrading trains. She's the most successful British woman in Winter Paralympic history and today Jade Edrington was welcomed back to her hometown in Lincolnshire. Jade, who only has 5% vision, won four medals at the Sochi Games earlier this month. Well, Gemma Dawson is live in Bourne tonight where Jade has been given the freedom of the town. What a momentous day for her today, Gemma. Absolutely. Well, Jade and her grandparents visited several local schools this morning, meeting hundreds of school children. And then just after two o'clock, they arrived here in Bourne, where hundreds of people turned up to see Jade, ask her questions and touch those famous four medals. Arriving in style, Lincolnshire's Paralympian back at her old school to show off her medals. It's really good to see everyone and just reminds me of like how far I've come um, from being here and starting skiing. For these lucky students, a chance to chat to Jade about her recent success. From the start, the school's been behind her. Um, it's really nice to have her here back where, where she started, I guess. Everybody's really excited to welcome her back because obviously she's one of ours. Jade spent months preparing for the Paralympics with her guide, Caroline. 
She's visually impaired, so relies on Caroline to guide her around the course. And all this training paid off. In Sochi, the pair won four medals. She's achieved what she wanted to do. She's set out her goals and she's reached her goals. And I'm very proud. And she's not the only one. In Bourne, around 200 people gathered to greet Jade, many desperate to touch her medals. To think we got like, such good talent in our area is absolutely brilliant. She's done us proud. It brings a lump to your throat when you watch it on the TV, but when you actually see her and uh, how nicely she speaks for a young girl, it was just wonderful. Everyone was so excited to see me and see the medals and get to touch them. It was really, uh, it was really fun. It was really nice, actually. Then inside for a civic reception, and Jade is given the freedom of Bourne. And there's more celebrations to come with an open-top bus tour of Lincoln on Friday. So as you can see, it's been a busy day for Jade, and the celebrations will continue. She said this afternoon she's quite ready for a holiday. But when I asked her what she's going to do next, she said she hasn't decided whether to carry on skiing and compete at the next Paralympics or to go into teaching, because she will qualify this summer. So a big decision for Jade, and one that we're going to have to wait and see, Amy, what she decides. Yeah, what a big day for her. Thanks very much, Gemma. Let's take a look at the weather now. Here's Paul Hudson. Hello again, good evening. Tomorrow we'll get off to a slow start, but it will brighten up and become pleasantly warm with some sunshine. But in the short term, although it's mostly dry right now, we've got a weather front that will bring some patchy outbreaks of rain up from the southwest, even the odd clap of thunder. Misty in places, lowest temperatures down to around 8 Celsius, that's 46 Fahrenheit. So any rain first thing in the morning across East Yorkshire, soon clearing out of the way, then it's a bit of a grey start, but through the morning skies will slowly brighten the afternoon. One or two sharp showers possible, but the emphasis on a good deal of dry and bright weather with some sunshine. We'll see top temperatures pleasant at 15 degrees at Celsius. Wednesday, a lot of low cloud might be reluctant to clear in places. That's the forecast. That's all from me tonight. Late kickoff is on BBC One shortly with highlights of Scunthorpe United's weekend. We're back in the morning as usual at 6.25 with our breakfast bulletins. Hope you can join us then. Bye for now.